Welcome back. Julian Assange faces extradition to the United States after his arrest this week. And his case is causing some political waves as well, with the Home Secretary likely to be involved in deciding where he ends up. Well, we're joined now by Jennifer Robinson, uh, Mr Assange's lawyer. Thank you very much for being on the programme this morning. Um, a lot of our viewers will be looking at this and thinking, this is a man who's been hiding from justice for seven years. Why should he be above the law? He's not above the law, and the fact is, he's no, Julian has never been concerned about facing British justice or indeed Swedish justice. This case is and has always been about his concern about being sent to face American injustice. We've been warning since 2010, and I've been working on his case since the initial Swedish request came through. Uh, we've been warning since then that he would face the risk of US extradition for actions and his work associated with WikiLeaks publications. We warned for years, and that is precisely what has happened. He was right all along and we were right all along to be worried about it. He was granted asylum inside the Ecuadorian embassy because of his concern about this risk of onward extradition to the United States. He has always cooperated with the Swedish investigation. He remained in Sweden to answer questions. We offered his testimony before they sought his extradition and we continued to offer his testimony. He only sought asylum inside the Ecuadorian embassy when Sweden refused to give assurances about onward extradition to the United States. That was what he was concerned about. He offered his testimony from inside the embassy. The Ecuadorian government sought assurances from Sweden he wouldn't be sent to the US. Those assurances were not forthcoming. And let's not forget that he actually answered questions of the prosecutors years ago, and that was when they decided to drop the investigation in Sweden. So there is, there have been no charges in Sweden. He offered his testimony and they decided to drop the case. Okay. When they dropped the case, he didn't leave the embassy. So if he had been, all these people saying he was hiding from Swedish justice, if that were the case, why didn't he walk out of the embassy two years ago when this case was dropped? Okay. Well, let's try and unpick some of what you're saying here because <laughs> it's quite a complex story. Um, we're talking there about some of the Swedish allegations, really serious allegations, rape, uh, sexual assault. He, of course, denies them. Um, and you say that it's all about him wanting, worrying about being extradited to the US. But at the same time, it was the extradition to Sweden, which was why he went into the embassy in the first place, because the UK agreed with the extradition to Sweden. Two weeks later, he went into the embassy. I mean, it was, the US wasn't on the table at that point. We were, there was a grand jury investigation that was opened back in 2010 and we were concerned about the risk of US extradition then. That concern has been proven correct this week. But shouldn't now, he have gone to Sweden to face those allegations? We were concerned because Sweden had not provided the assurance against onward extradition that once in custody, once in custody, he would not be able to seek asylum with respect to the United States. That is why he walked into the embassy when he did. The asylum that was granted by Ecuador was with respect to the risk of being sent to the United States to face prosecution for his publishing activities and for actions associated with that. That is precisely the request that came through this week. Now, Ecuador continued to negotiate with Sweden to try to deal with the Swedish investigation and to allow prosecutors to question him so he could answer the Swedish allegations while protecting him from US extradition. That is why he was in the embassy. You see, you, you say that he's provided testimony that he's answered the allegations in Sweden, but it's on his terms, isn't it? I mean, what does that mean off a testimony? Does that just mean writing a letter to, to Sweden? The For Swedish a lot of people, that's not appropriate. The Swedish prosecutors came inside the Ecuadorian embassy to ask him questions about the case. He gave his testimony and after that they chose to close the investigation. This is a fact that has been completely lost in the discussion about this case over the past couple of weeks. That investigation was closed after hearing his testimony. If they choose to reopen it, that is a separate question and we will deal with it, but we are absolutely happy to answer those queries if and when they come up. The key issue at the moment is US extradition, which is what we've warned about for many years. Because my understanding was that the charges were dropped effectively because he was in the embassy. So the rape investigation dropped in 2017 because they couldn't formally notify him of the allegations. Two molestation charges dropped in 2015 because time had run out because he was effectively in the embassy for seven years, so he didn't have to face up to it. That's what lots of people will be thinking. He has, all, as I've said repeatedly, he has always offered his testimony and offered to cooperate with the Swedish oh, investigation. But it's not his terms, isn't it? It's not what they want. In order to protect himself from the very extradition request that was served on him this week, he was right to be concerned about that, and that is why he was in the embassy. This case is and has always been about the risk of extradition to the United States. I think people need to focus on the fact that 
These, this indictment that has come from the United States relates to his communications with a source about a major public interest publication. This is about Chelsea Manning's leak in 2010. This is about US spying on UN and European politicians. This is about human rights abuse and corruption the world over. This is about evidence of US war crimes killing journalists. These are the publications that he is now facing extradition and prosecution over. It's also about rape allegations and women who, have, who feel that they haven't seen those allegations been brought to and the justice. An investigation in Sweden, which he cooperated with while protecting himself from extradition to the United States. If, if that investigation is reopened, if there is an extradition request, we will deal with it. And will we will you comply answer. with an extradition request if it is made by Sweden? If Sweden makes an extradition request, there will be a question for the Home Secretary about which case we'll take precedence, and we will certainly be asking for the same assurances that we asked before, which is that he wouldn't be sent to the United States after dealing with it. That is the same assurance we were seeking in 2010, and the refusal to give that is why he sought asylum when so he did. So otherwise, he, won't, he doesn't want to comply with it, unless there is that specific assurance? The concern is and has always been about protecting him from being sent to the United States. OK, well, let's talk about the, um, the US um, extradition uh, request. And the argument seems to be that this is a journalist concerned with transparency, um, that it was a, a public interest um, defence. But the US charge is quite specific, isn't it? It's about hacking into a computer system. Now, if, if anybody actually reads beyond the, the, the headline of the Department of Justice um, press release, which is about hacking, if you look at the actual factual allegations, what it boils down to is an allegation that he was communicating with a source, encouraging a source to provide information, and provided, alleged, allegedly, provided information to assist the source to protect their identity. So Chelsea Manning, there's no suggestion that Julian Assange hacked US government computers. There's no suggestion that he assisted Chelsea Manning to access material that Chelsea Manning didn't already have access to. It is simply an allegation of an intention to assist a source to protect their identity while accessing that material. This is something that journalists do all the time. Now, it remains to be seen whether those allegations can be proven, but that's why US free speech groups have been up in arms this week and are very concerned about the chilling impact this will have because it clearly, this indictment clearly engages news gathering activities and the kinds of communications that journalists have with sources all the time. Other human rights groups they have been concerned about some of the actions that WikiLeaks have taken with regards to that material as well. I'm, I'm referring to, for example, uh, the fact that Amnesty International uh, and Reporters Without Borders said that the Taliban could use some of the data that he made public in order to try and target Afghan civilians who worked with the US coalition, effectively putting their lives at risk. I mean, what's the journalistic justification for that? Well, journalists publish information all of the time, which, which is alleged by government officials to potentially put at risk national security or put people at risk. But these no, journalists take steps to try and there, make sure that civilians are protected as well. That's true. Well, WikiLeaks also had a reduction process in the early days when they were doing the publications with The Guardian, and you know there were some issues around, around that. But the fact is there's constant allegations that WikiLeaks has somehow caused damage to people. There is no evidence that anybody has been harmed or certainly not killed as a result of WikiLeaks publications. Not, no evidence of that. I guess um, what I'm trying to get to a little bit as well um, with the first question about um, so some people will think that this is a man who sees himself as above mm. the law uh, is that I can understand that you have question marks over the US justice system um, but Mr Assange also doesn't want to face the Swedish courts he can also appeal in the UK to the Supreme Court against the extradition he can also appeal to the European Court of Human Rights so why doesn't he trust any of these courts in the US the European Court the UK Court the Swedish Court the concern was not about facing Swedish justice, and I'll say it again, it was not about his concern about facing Swedish justice, it was the risk of facing American injustice. Now, this case is highly politicised. If we look back to 2010, which is what the indictment relates to, we had high-profile US politicians calling for him to be killed by drone strike. We've, we've seen just this week um, high-profile senators saying that he's now our property and we'll do with him what we will. Uh, these are serious concerns, and, and if we look at the you, way that... Do you think the UK government's politicising it as well, then? I think this case has been politicised. Now, we will obviously fight this extra the extradition request to the United States in the courts, so it's a matter for the British courts now. But in terms of the broader context, this is somebody who has published the largest amount of American classified information in history. He has demonstrated, he's embarrassed the US military industrial complex, he's embarrassed the CIA. We've had the director of the CIA call him a hostile non-state non 
intelligence agency and saying that he ought to be prosecuted, we want to take WikiLeaks down and he ought not benefit from First Amendment protections. These are very serious allegations from the highest level of the US administration. And to think that this case is not politicised, I think, ignores the fact. He has had some political support from Jeremy Corbyn, who tweeted to say that he doesn't think he should be extradited to the US. Was that welcome? Of course it's welcome. And I think that anyone who believes in public interest journalism and understands the public interest in the publications that WikiLeaks made, like I said, spying on U UN leaders, spying on European politicians, spying on the French president. Uh, the WikiLeaks publications included material that Amnesty International credited WikiLeaks on Tunisia that sparked the Arab Spring and democratic revolutions. It's changed the way we think about journalism and the right to know having someone extradited for any actions associated with those publications that have won journalism awards the world over ought to be a concern and it's right and correct that Jeremy Corbyn said what he said. Um, just finally, this is a man who spent seven years in a room at the Ecuadorian mm. embassy. I mean, we've all seen the footage uh, of him you know, emerging from the Ecuadorian right. embassy. A lot of allegations and rumours over the relationship breakdown, including that he spread faeces on the walls. I mean, w what has it been like for him living in there? I think the first thing to say is that Ecuador has been making some pretty outrageous allegations over the past few days to justify what was an unlawful and extraordinary act in allowing British police to come inside an embassy. Um, so it's not true then? That's not true. Uh, look, it's a difficult situation. He, I've been visiting him in the embassy for f throughout this seven-year period. It's, he hasn't had access to the outside. Um, he's been inside a room, effectively, as you said, for, for more than seven years. People have children who are six and seven years old for, that, for your child's entire life. This man has been inside a room in quite difficult circumstances. Now, the politics of the case with respect to Ecuador changed with the change of government, with Lena Moreno coming to power. And ever since then, inside the embassy, it's become more and more difficult to the point where even Human Rights Watch said it, it was akin to solitary confinement. So he's had a very difficult time. It's not been easy. And to suggest that someone would choose to remain in there without legitimate concerns about US extradition, which is exactly what was proven this week, I think people can't really understand what it would be like to live in a room like that for a very long time. It's not been easy. Okay. Thank you very much for being on the programme today. Thank you.